Chapter 7, Stress and Well-Being at Work. All of us can definitely attest to having stress. Managing this class, another course, work full-time, part-time, or at home, and family obligations. It's the unconscious preparation to fight or flee that we experience when faced with a demand. The stressor is usually the demand, and we can have distress or strain as a result of that stress. Four approaches to stress. Homostatic, medical, cognitive appraisal, person environment fit, and psychoanalytic. Homeostasis is our steady state. When that changes, we have that fight or flight response. Cognitive appeal approach looks at our psychological and cognitive aspects. Cognitive being thinking. And stress that it's a person environment interaction. If we're problem focused, we manage whatever the demand or stressor is. Emotion focused, we figure out how to respond to it properly. Person fit, person environment fit, basically putting the right person in the right place so their skills and expert expectations match. That reduces stress. Sigmund Freud, psychoanalytic approach. Stress is the discrepancy or difference between our ego ideal and our self-image. The stress response, our body releases chemicals. Our nervous system and endocrine system are activated. Our blood's redirected. We're more alert. I'm sure many of us can add more demands than this list shows. Task demand, career progress, poor leadership, role demand, trying to be too many people to everybody. You stress is a healthy and normal stress, but you have to balance the benefits of that against the cost of distress. The York's Dodson Law basically looks at how we perform. If we have very low stress and very low performance, we're bored. If we are just beat upon and are overstimulated and just can't do any more, we have high distress. So what we found is that stress is good, but it needs to be more in an optimum position so that the amount of stress engages us. Some benefits of URES. We are much more engaged and we're healthily working our systems properly when it turns into de-stress, uh, behavioral problems, organizational problems. Very newsworthy information, distress with medical illnesses resulting, behavioral problems, and work-related psychological disorders. We think about individuals under stress, but organizations are also in stress and can be distressed. Problems with absenteeism, poor product, bad product, resulting of lawsuits, money impact. Men and women look at lots of things differently, including how we handle stress. Women have different stressors than men at times, and they will tend to react to them differently. Probably you've most all heard about type A and type B personality. Type A tends to be very urgent, very out there, very aggressive. Type B, which isn't shown here, tends to be more sedate, um, more unaffected. 
interestingly, some different studies have indicated that type A, as much as they can have heart attacks, sometimes are less likely to than a type B because type A is expressing their emotions where type B may be suppressing it, which can cause to other health problems. Hardiness versus frail. Um, personality hardness, one that'll just kind of plow through it and they'll engage in, in a way to cope. Self-reliance. The definition here leaves out the word independent pattern. So self-reliance is being independently reliant, and that also works on how you have relationships and support from others, essentially the proper way. Three forms of attachment, self-reliance, counter-dependence, and over-dependence. Um, the bottom two can have some drawbacks. As much as we talk about stress, particularly in the world today, it is, it is not inevitable. In other words, you can get around this. Many companies are looking at putting um, all sorts of wellness programs in place to help their employees. Try to reduce, modify, or eliminate the source respond differently, and heal if it's there. How can an organization help? Good job design, smart goal setting, understanding the roles, looking at career management, team building, social support at work. If you look at the job strain model, when there's low performance and low workload, it's kind of a passive job. And some people have that and like that. If you have a high workload and you are very self-determined and want to work, the active job is okay. If you start combining, excuse me, combining all the others, you will have more strain in the job. Social support, whether it's from the organization, family, organizations, churches, clubs, professionals. These are all things that will support and help with stress. So what can we individually do? Big one in my mind is positive thinking. Exercise, diet, relaxation, which I don't always practice as much as I should. And then opening up and getting professional help when necessary. As I mentioned earlier, many companies are establishing and promoting wellness programs, um, providing for physical fitness, um, workout centers, planned activities during lunchtime. So from a manager's standpoint, we want healthy stress. Adjust workloads when necessary. Don't put people in positions to have an ethical dilemma. Be very sensitive to diversity, which can be a stressor. Realize that most of us don't work to live. We rephrase that. Don't live to work. We more or less work to live. Help people adjust to the changes in the technologies and the business setups. Be sensitive to those signs and be aware. Use preventative stress management principles.